Hello, Gary Rogers here. Welcome to the Spiritual Heritage Channel. Today I'm wanting to talk to you about a New Zealand governor, Governor Fitzroy. He was the second New Zealand governor between 1843 and 1845. He joined the Naval Academy in England at age 14 and took his first command of a vessel at age 23. The first command was of the ship the Beagle and it was commissioned to do survey, hydrology survey in South America. This was quite a small vessel. It was a, rigged as a bark and these ships were often referred to as coffins because they were death traps. It was the second voyage of the Beagle that is most well known. Fitzroy had a fear of suicide. His uncle had committed suicide, Lord Kavanagh, and the previous commander of the Beagle had also committed suicide. To counteract this, he wanted to take a cabin mate, and he selected Charles Darwin, a 22 year old university graduate. Charles Darwin was interested in natural history and was taken on board as a naturalist. The second voyage of the Beagle left England in 1832 and was away for five years. Fitzroy took with him 19 chronometers. It was normal to take about nine chronometers on a long trip on a vessel. These were like clocks and they compared clocks one with the other to keep correct time. Without this they wouldn't know where they were in terms of longitude. When the vessel got back to England five years later and checked his clocks they were only 36 seconds out and a lot of his clocks, half of his clocks had failed during that time. So he was a man who was concerned with meticulous detail. Not only that, he lost only three men in the five years that he was away. Fitzroy and Darwin, they often discussed what they were observing on this trip. It was Fitzroy's job to survey South America and hydrological surveys right on the coast. The maps that he's created were used, still being used, a hundred years later in World War II. Darwin had formed his ideas about natural selection and evolution during this trip. It was very interesting the way these two men interacted. Sometimes Fitzroy would agree with Darwin and sometimes he would wonder how it related to the biblical record. For example, they observed a big lava flow, old lava flow and a deep river valley cut into it and they wondered how this could happen without a long process of time. Darwin observed that high in the Mandes Mountains were shell fossils and he explained this by uplift. They've observed the uplift along the coast during an earthquake that they encountered on their trip. In New Zealand we recently saw an example of uplift along the Kaikoura coast and I have been there where the rocks have risen out of the sea, probably to a few metres, and the sea life was left on the top. Darwin explained the fossils high in the Andes Mountains as being as a result of this uplift over long periods of time. But when Fitzroy looked at it, he thought, well, something catastrophic has actually happened to bury all these fossils at the same time. And he explained it, he thought he could only explain it by a biblical flood which carried large amounts of 
sediment with shells onto these high mountains. Arguing the biblical account against the popular scientific explanation has often been difficult and I've found in my own experience that people are often not convinced by the biblical account and even scientific evidence behind that people find hard to accept. It often takes a another encounter with God, a spiritual encounter, before they will accept the biblical account. So I'll leave it to you to make that decision, but here is a thought for you that Fitzroy uh, was actually more competent at geology than Darwin. It was actually Fitzroy who introduced Darwin to geology in the first place. He gave him a, a textbook on it on board the Beagle. The Beagle returned to England in 1837. When he returned to England, Fitzroy got married. It's thought that it was through the influence of his wife Emily that Fitzroy made a solid Christian commitment. And from that point on, he actually embraced creationism rather than the evolutionary theories of Darwin. Fitzroy also had some poor attitudes towards native peoples on his journey that Darwin noted. But his attitude had changed completely when he later became governor of New Zealand and dealing with the Maori people. In 1843, Fitzroy was asked to be governor of New Zealand. Now, this was actually a very difficult time for New Zealand. There was a conflict with Maori. The settlers uh, often were unruly. And the country was also in financial difficulty after overspending by the previous government under Busby. But Fitzroy always operated out of public duty and so he took this position. But he was also a man who took initiative. During the survey of South America once, he, he needed a, a smaller vessel to get in closer to the coastline and also to make the whole survey go quicker because they were actually only supposed to be away for two years, but ended up being away for five years. And out of his own wealth, out of his own money, he bought a schooner, the Adventurer, and surveyed the coastline. He thought that the Admiralty would pay him back, but they never did. This shows that this man had initiative and wasn't waiting to always get the official command before he did things. He was pragmatic. In New Zealand, there were some difficult situations he had to face. One was the conflict in Northland and especially in Kororareka, where a young chief by the name of Honihiki had several times cut down the flagpole in that township. Fitzroy had put a guard there and had actually strengthened the pole with steel. But Honihiki, he failed it again and eventually ransacked the town and the settlers were driven back to Auckland. So there was pressure on Fitzroy to bring in more British troops and more troops were summoned from New South Wales. However, the other chiefs in Northland, they wanted to honour the Treaty of Waitangi. They wanted good relations with the settlers and with the government. And while these troops were on the way to Northland, they negotiated with Fitzroy to turn the, the troops away and that they would deal with Honihiki. This move was not popular with the settlers. Another situation where Fitzroy acted where it wasn't popular was with the 
why Rayart tragedy? What happened in this situation that the New Zealand company, who were the company who were driving settling in New Zealand and immigration, had negotiated with a chief by the name of Taraprah to buy the land around the city of Nelson and the New Zealand company claimed that Taraprah had also sold them the Wairau plane, a large plane just south of Nelson near the city of Blenheim. However, Taraprah claimed he'd never sold it to them. The New Zealand company sent in surveyors to this area and they had been warned not to go. The Maori burnt the settlers' huts that they had made and pulled up their survey pens. And the settlers responded and the New Zealand company responded by getting together a, um, call them a posse, I guess, if you were, if this was a western, and a large group of deputised settlers, who many of whom never used a gun, and sent them to the Wairau. A shot was fired, probably from the settlers. One of the chief's wives was killed, and a conflict broke out. A number of settlers were killed. Nine of the settlers were taken, and the surveyors were taken prisoner, and the Maori actually killed their, their captors and this caused a, a great concern among the settlers in New Zealand. Sometime later Fitzroy became governor and had to deal with this situation. They decided that the situation was very provoked and that the New Zealand company was in the wrong. This didn't go down well with the settlers in Nelson because many of the people in that township had been killed in that incident. Fitzroy was eventually recalled to England in 1845, not only because of incidents like this, but he had also printed bonds to keep the financial situation afloat because New Zealand was suffering from the overspending of the previous government. When Fitzroy returned to England, Charles Darwin brought out his book, The Origin of the Species. Fitzroy was deeply disappointed in this book. He was disappointed that he had a, a big part in uh, enabling Darwin to formulate this philosophy. He became a, the leader, the head of a metrological office in England. This was set up to, to help the safety of sailors at that time. They knew that if they could predict weather better and storms, then they would have a chance of saving life. Not only that, he was the first to instigate weather forecasts. In fact, the word forecast actually comes from Fitzroy. People in England, uh, although these were published in newspapers at the time, people in England weren't quite ready for it. And after Fitzroy's death, they wondered, well, wh why do we need forecasts? They're not completely accurate. So, uh, what? was to be another 10 years after he died before they, they began publishing them again. In 1860, there was a very well-known debate between Professor Huxley, who was a proponent of Darwin's evolution theories, and Samuel Wilberforce, Bishop Samuel Wilberforce, who was William Wilberforce's brother, who took the creation point of view. Samuel Wilberforce attacked Huxley personally, accusing him of having ape ancestry. And this was like a red rag to a bull. And Huxley, who was a very competent debater, won that debate easily. Fitzroy was in the audience, and after the debate, he 
got up and he told the audience of his creation views of his observations on the Beagle. Fitzroy throughout his life was under extreme pressure. When he left New Zealand, the settlers of Nelson in New Zealand, where most of those who were killed in Wairau Frey came from, burnt an effigy of him. He also was up against politics in leading the Metrological Office, and his work was often unappreciated, but had had long-lasting value, and we enjoy the Metrological Service and weather forecast due to the foundation of some of his work. The pressures became too much for Fitzroy and he committed suicide. What, what he feared had actually come upon him. You would think that maybe his Christian worldviews would have saved him from that. We need more than just a Christian worldview. We actually need a relationship with Jesus. And we also need to be connected with people. Uh, we, with those early commanders, they often were connected, they were isolated. He was isolated in his position of Governor of New Zealand. And in the end, he felt responsible and maybe sidelined by Darwin's evolutionary ideas. I hope, though, that you'll see that he was a very intelligent man and that he was seeing the same things that Darwin saw but came to a different conclusion. I hope that maybe this might actually help you as you look at the issues of creation versus the evolutionary ideas and maybe you could have another look at that and come to your own conclusions. Thank you for joining me on the Spiritual Heritage Channel. I've got other videos on similar subjects, and if you could take the time to look at those, I hope that they too would be a blessing to you. Thank you.